Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Bianca Collins. I'm the curator of public programs for the Fowler Museum at UCLA. The Fowler is very excited to present today's program as the premiere of our summer series of digital programs that we've titled World Arts, Local Lives. This world movement series was born out of a collaboration with the Visual Arts and Performing Arts Education Program. We've been honored to work with the team at VAPA to engage their talented teaching artists to share their knowledge of movement and dance practices from around the world. Today's class, Space, Place, and Visions with Jack Ironstone, will invite us to explore Tibetan improvisational techniques that enhance sensory awareness. A little bit of background first about Jack. Born and raised in LA, Jack attended the Juilliard School and then finished their degree as a graduate of the UCLA Department of World Arts and Culture with a minor in visual arts and performing arts education, class of 2020. Their decision to switch their education from a conservatory to a liberal arts philosophy set off a chain reaction that has created a dance artist with traditional roots and a flexible, curious mind. As a choreographer for queer non-binary pop artists, they border the commercial and experimental world, worlds of art making to embrace the full spectrum of human existence. For today's program, I wanna encourage you all to stay on speaker view, uh, not gallery mode. That will make sure that Jack is always front and center leading you through the class. I also encourage you guys to turn on your cameras, but no pressure to do so if you feel more comfortable participating with it off. Jack will be able to see your video feeds and he will offer suggestions or comments as needed and all participants will stay muted to the class and the chat has been disabled to help create a safe space for everyone. All right, that's it. Let's get ready to move. Jack, over to you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jack Ironstone. I want to thank all uh, everyone for joining us here today. Um, I'm really excited. I see some familiar names, some familiar faces, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Curator of Public Programs, Bianca Collins, for having me, as well as the UCLA Visual and Performing Arts Education Department. I'm really thankful to be here. So um, let's begin. Today's class, I'm really just focusing on some improvisational techniques, some tools that allow us to enhance our awareness of our bodies. I think, especially in this moment, I'm really excited to explore the process rather than the product. How can we redefine and reevaluate our movement processes, our, the wiring of our movement in our body um, in order to produce a different outcome? And what does that feel like first? And then what does it look like second? So I'd like to ask first, um, can you move your head to the right or to the left? if you are familiar with dance improvisation, if um, this isn't your first time doing that, if you're, isn't your first time practicing this, so just move it to the right or to the left, and then move it up or down if you have done in dance improvisation before. Up and down if you have done dance improvisation before, and to the right and to the left if you have not. Just start playing with your sight, not really, uh, judging how you're seeing, but just taking it all in. All right, nice. Okay, so it's a little bit of a mixed class. I'm into that. Um, so before we begin with some dance improvisation, I'd just like to suggest a few ground rules or game rules um, to, to be taken passively or actively. So one of the first tips is that dance improvisation with just your body is about making decisions with your own body, for your own body, um, about your own body and how your body moves and why. So it's really about making your own choices, your own decisions with your body. The second thing is no judgment. With dance improvisation, there is, we're not judging how we're moving, we're just moving and we'll reflect on it after. Um, and then the third and fourth rule, I would say, are kind of the same, maybe. So the third rule, I would say, is as we're improvising together, remember to return to your breath. Remember how inhaling, we're feeling the air fill our, the backs of our backs as well as the front. And when we're exhaling, we're releasing that weight 
and we're feeling ourselves melt into the floor. Um, and then the fourth thing is stillness. So as we're improvising and as we're moving, I think we can get stuck on like not judging how we're moving and just to be constantly moving. But what makes the decision so important about our bodies and how we make choices with our bodies is the pauses that we take. You know, if we're really moving in one particular way, what can we change intentions? Can we, it's just about the pauses. It's not, it doesn't have to be consistently moving. We can change the degrees of it, the intensity, the speeds. There's always something to be thinking about. And that's what makes it so much fun. That's what makes it such a focus on the body. Um, in this class, in this session, I think you're gonna notice that we're not gonna be using any music. Um, I'd really just like to let us listen to our own bodies, the sounds of our own bodies. What are our bodies telling us? <laughs> And how can we listen? All right. So I think I'd like to begin with a warm up really quick just to get ourselves into our bodies. Um, if we're able to stand, that's great. If we're not able to stand, please modify, take any modifications you need necessary. Um, all right. So the first thing we're gonna do is reach up to the sky with our shoulders high. We're gonna say, I love the sky. And then we're going to release our shoulders down. And as we're pulling our shoulders down and lengthening outwards, we're going to be moving our arms down our bodies. And we're going to touch our toes. And we're going to say, I love the earth. I love the earth. One more time. Rise up. I love the sky. Shoulders down, lengthening down, lengthening from our backs. Our backs move our arms down. I love the earth. Now, if you can see me, I'm piped down. I'm going to crawl my hands up to my knees. Crawl my hands up to my knees. My feet are together. I'm pushing the weight into my hands, and I'm lengthening my spine. So it should be kind of like a flat back with the weight in my hands. I'm supporting myself with my hands on my knees. And I'm going to pull my back down and contract inwards. And then I'm going to release and slowly, sequentially release into a cow and say, I love the insects one more time contract with the weight in my hands and my knees, keeping my shoulders down, and then release. I love the insects. Then we're going to step out into a wide second, and we're gonna say, I love the wind. I love the wind. Move to the side. We're going to move, I'm moving to the left first. So if I'm moving to the left first, I'm taking my right hip and I'm pulling it to the left and I'm sequentially moving to the right. We're not judging our movement, we're just warming up. Now I'm going to the right and I'm pulling my left hip down into the right and I'm sequentially moving to the left. One more time. I love the wind. Really breathe, remember to breathe. One more time, I love the wind. And then roll back up sequentially. Take a deep breath in and drop down. I love the ocean. Now I'm in a wide second and I'm supporting my hands on the floor. I love the ocean. And then I'm going to bring my feet together. So I'm here with my hands supporting my knees and my spine, lengthening in my spine. And then as if my head were carving a dome in space, 
I'm going to lift myself up. Nice, beautiful. So let's try that all together. So it's I love the sun, I love the sky, I love the earth, I love the insects. Jump into a second. I love the wind. I'm just reviewing. And then drop down. I love the ocean. All right, so let's try that all together once. Yeah, okay. So, I love the sky. I love the earth. Remember to breathe. I love the insects. I love the wind. And I love the ocean. Drop down. Bring your feet together. Let your head drop. And with your hands, with your spine lengthened, slowly walk yourself up. Now this next time we do it, we're gonna think about an intention for this class, this session together. So an intention I would say is like a manageable, doable goal that you would like to investigate together, that you'd like to investigate for yourself as we learn these tools. So this next round, we're gonna be thinking about an intention. So an intention like I'll listen for new ideas or I'll feel the electricity in and around my body. Uh, so just think about an intention for this next cycle and just keep repeating it to yourself like a mantra. I love the sky. I love the earth. I love the insects. the wind. I love the ocean. Really breathe into parts where it's tight, where you feel your muscles contracting on the inhale. And on the exhale, release those muscles, release them into the floor. Inhale, bring your feet together. And your head is carving a dome into space. All right. So I think in that warm up, what I was trying to get to was thinking about our movement in planes. So, like, you know how in math and like geometry class, they had like the X, Y graph, and I think Z is like forwards and backwards. It's like the, this chart. So in dance, or even in anatomy, they think about the body in planes. So the, we have the frontal plane, which divides the body between the front and the back. We have the sagittal plane, which is moving forwards and backwards. So we have frontal plane, we have the sagittal plane moving through, forwards, back, and up. We have the horizontal plane. So the horizontal plane divides the body between the upper and the lower body. So the horizontal plane could be, you know, I love the earth. It could be, I love the ocean. Um, those, those types of things. So as we're warming up, think about how our bodies are moving through those planes. Um, and let's, so with that in mind, let's actually go into the next set of exercises before we go into the improvisational task, which is, um, I'll be focusing on what Barbara Dilley, she's an American choreographer, and she was really inspired by Dharma art in, uh, and Buddhism. So one of the things that she's focusing on is called the five eye practice. And with the five eye practice, she's kind of thinking about an articulation of the eyes um, of just the anatomical eyes and the different kind of qualities 
or intentions that we can use and move our bodies with. So this first exercise is just kind of warm us up, kind of like in the beginning of what we did. You're gonna to look to your right and you're gonna find a point and you're gonna spot that point. You're gonna really see that point and really see it. What are you looking at? And what are we really focusing on? And then look to your left and really find and spot that point. What, what are you seeing? What are you looking at? Really spot it. Then we're gonna to return to the right. Find that point, really see it. See it in all of its entirety, all of its wholeness, its completeness. Look to the left. We're gonna spot that point. Find, return to that point that you had just found on the left. Then return to the right, left, right, left. Can you find that point each time we, we switch directions? Left, right, left. Can you go faster? Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. Can you keep spotting that point? <laughs> All right. And then we're going to do the same thing with up and down. So we're going to look up, find that point, really see it, because we're going to return to it. And then look down, find that point. What are you seeing? Then look up. Look down, look up, down, up, down, and up, and down, and up, and down, up, 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 down, up. Are you returning to that specific spot that you see? How fast <laughs> can you keep? Uh, my hair is going crazy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Then this, this second, this will be the last warm up. We're going to take, let me see if I can do this. Okay. So we're standing straight. We're going to root into our left leg and ra raise our right knee. Just feel that balance. This is really good for ankle stability. Now that same thing, it's as if, you know, like, a cookie bowl or like a bowl of like cookie dough, that half circle. I want everyone to think about looking at that half circle and drawing like a dotted line, a semi, a half circle dotted line that goes out and around to the right as we're balancing on one on the left leg and then drawing that dotted line around the cookie dough bowl, that dotted line to the left, really lifting, lengthening our spine. One more time to the right. If you want to point with your finger, that might be helpful. And to the left, remember to breathe, release the tension in your body. Now put your right leg down and lift up, rooting in your right leg. We're going to lift up our left leg, our left knee, and then the same thing. Move slowly in a dotted line. Trace that dotted line to the right, and then trace it to the left. Trace it to the right, and then trace it to the left. We're gonna lower our neck, left knee, raise our right knee, bring our head back to center, and then close your eyes, and just try and balance. It's different, right? It's different for me. You know, how can we keep lengthening? Ooh. Uh, eyes are closed. 
And then with our eyes closed, we're gonna lower our right knee, root with both legs, and then raise our left knee. Really good for ankle support. Uh. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, five eye practices. One thing that I'd like to focus on, or one thing that got me thinking about the five eye practices, was the difference between looking and the difference between seeing. So, if, due to the format, you know, the conversation's a little bit restricted, but I would say that looking is more like a passive action, you know, looking at the faucet, looking at the door, looking at the window, just looking, looking, looking. But then seeing is very direct. You know, I see the wall plug. I see the window. And I'm looking at the details. I'm focusing on the details of the window. Um, yeah, so that difference between looking and seeing, that active and passive, quality that we can bring to how we move our bodies. So the five eye practices, what are they? <laughs> They're five, let's just do them. So the first one is closed eyes and closed eyes will just stand. It's supposed to rest and refresh the eyes. We're just resting, recharging our eyes. We, our anatomical eyes, this anatomical sense, um, just let it relax. Take some deep breaths. When we inhale, really feel the back of your lungs expand. You can even put your hand there. Keep lengthening. We can even put our right hand to our hearts and our left hand to our stomach and feel if they're inhaling and exhaling, if they're doing that at the same time. Just notice if they're moving together, if one's moving before the other, if one's going higher than the other. Last one. All right, the second one, so we have closed eyes. We're going to slowly open our eyes. And this next one's called peripheral seeing. So if you put your arms to the side, you're trying to see from your left hand to your right hand, but you're not really looking at them. You're looking through your peripheral vision. So you're just trying to soften the focus in your eyes to see everything without really looking at everything. It's peripheral seeing. It's soft. Yeah? All right, we can lower our arms. Really just think about trying to see everything without really seeing it, seeing it peripherally. How far to the side can you look? How far to the right can you look? How far down? How far up? without really focusing on it. All right. The third one is looking between things. So you're looking at the empty spaces that are in between what you're looking at. So everyone has their own unique space right now, but we're looking in between the empty spaces, the negative spaces that inhabit our space. So you can kind of move your neck with this one. You know, what are the shapes of the empty spaces? instead of the spaces that are taken up by material objects. What are those empty space shapes? Looking between things. What's the depth, the dimensions of the empty space? What empty space do you notice? And then this fourth one is called infant eyes. And you're just moving your eyes around 
like a baby, like an infant, without really analyzing anything, without really seeing or looking, you're just taking it all in as fast as you can without any judgment. So my eyes are moving very fast, just seeing, just looking, not really focusing on anything. You're like an infant, it's just, your eyes are just moving around, no control, absolutely no, total freedom. Where you can look, you can start moving your neck. We can go fast, we can go slow. All these choices we can make. All right, and then this last one, the fifth one, is direct looking. And direct looking is not so much about like eye contact, like direct eye contact, or it's more about like in front of me, I see a window and I'm looking at the details of the knob that opened the window. It's about looking through, think about looking through with your eyes through the back of your head not pushing through the front directly, but thinking about how you're seeing through the back of your head forward. And you're just focusing in on the tiny details that make up the object that you're looking at. color is it? How big is it? What are the parts that make it up? Is it rusted? Is it dusty? Is it clean? All right, so those are the five. Um, just let's go over them really fast and then we'll move on. So the five are closed eyes, we're resting and refreshing our eyes. We open up our eyes, peripheral vision, we're looking at how we can see everything. You know, I see both my right hand and my left hand. How high can you take them and keep them in your line of vision? How low can you take them and keep them in your line of vision without really looking at them? And then we have looking between things. So our vision's becoming a little more Direct, still thinking about looking through the back of our heads, but now we're looking at the empty spaces. Really acknowledging the empty spaces in our lives. And then infinite eyes, you know, total freedom, no analyzing, just our eyes moving around. What are the limitations of this anatomy? How far down can you get them? How far to the side? That's just wild. And then direct looking. really observing the details of one thing, of what's in front of you, from the back of your head forward. And as we're doing that, I'd just like us to consider how these qualities are things that we can incorporate into really all of our senses, into how we choose to move our bodies. Um, I think one thing I love about focusing on, you know, our anatomical site is that as you know, later in this session, we're going to move on to our, our ears. And what I love about the ears is that the sight really only, you can only see what's in front of you. You know, we don't have eyes in the back of our head, but with sound, we can hear both what's in front of us and also what's behind us. And so it just, you know, adds to that investigation, which I love about all the different kinds of senses. All right, so let's close our eyes.
And let's soften the neck and bring that same rest and refreshing quality that we did with this, with just our anatomical eyes. Let's bring it to our whole head. Let's feel the weight of our whole head. It can be any movement. We're beginning to enter the territory of improvisation. Welcome to the new world. <laughs> and just feel your neck resting and refreshing itself with, its eye, with your eyes closed. You know, what if your neck had eyes? How would you rest and refresh your neck with the weight of your head? Really the heaviest part of your body too. All right, let's slowly open our eyes. And let's add our shoulders. So now with this idea of peripheral vision, how can we move our shoulders with a soft focus that extends and lengthens out of the corners of our shoulders, all corners of our shoulders, keeping this idea of peripheral vision, but adding the shoulders. You know, as we're seeing, as we're looking peripherally, outwards and inwards, how do you incorporate the shoulders? Up, up, down. Can you move them inwards and outwards? Nice. Nice. Yeah, everyone's doing a really great job. Remember stillness, returning to our breath, you know, not always constantly moving, but maybe taking a pause to think about where to take it next. Now looking between things. So the space between our shoulders and our hips. That's what I'm looking in between right now. The space between our shoulders and our hips. In between our shoulders and our hips, there's our spine. There's our whole, you know, gut. All those bacteria and our gut that keep our mind healthy. Nice, nice. Looking in between things, between our shoulders and our hips. We're not judging how we're moving. We're just first instinct, best instinct. We're just listening to our bodies, how our bodies want to move right now between our shoulders and our hips, looking in between things. All right, and then this next one, infant eyes. We're just moving. We're just exploring the limitations 
of our bodies. We're getting to understand them. How high can I contort, twist? How soft can I breathe into my body? We're just kind of exploring these qualities without giving any weight to them. They're not, they're not so precious. It's just movement. It's not that serious. Nice. I love what I'm seeing. Really nice, everyone. Remember to connect with the breath. You know, how does your body move like an infant? Think about, you know, when you were four years old, when you were five years old, that's not even an infant, but you know what I mean? Move with that kind of curiosity. How would your five-year-old self move? about the planes that we talked about earlier, frontal plane, sagittal plane, forwards and backwards, and horizontal plane, which divides the upper body and the lower body. How do we incorporate those planes, thinking about those planes into this kinds of movement. All right, and now direct looking. How do we incorporate our feet into direct looking? What does it mean to look to see with our feet. If I'm direct looking with my feet, I'm really thinking about all of the details in and around my foot. It can go like this. On the outer edge of my foot, it can go inwards. One can go inwards, one can go outwards. I can alternate that. How does that affect my hips? my head, I can go on the balls of my foot, I can go on the heels of my foot. But if I'm just balancing on my heels, I can swivel better, I can swivel more easily. Can I, can I transfer the weight from my balls to my heels? Can I do so alternately with one foot on the ball, one the other on the heel, and can I switch that? We're just focusing on the feet, all of the directions the feet can go. If you'd like to incorporate the rest of your body, feel free to do so. So now I'm, you know, feeling the in-between space between my feet and my hips. And that in-between space hinges on the horizontal plane on my knees. But my knees can also hinge forwards. They cannot hinge backwards. They can also... If I tighten my legs, maybe they're moving on the frontal plane, going up. And I can also release them. Still direct looking with my feet. So if I'm direct looking with my feet, how can 
I also look peripherally, see peripherally with my shoulders. What does it mean to direct look with my feet and see peripherally with my shoulders? Am I playing with symmetry, asymmetry? I'm now incorporating sound. I can swipe my foot, I can stop my foot, I can raise my heel and just make a beat. So now I'm direct looking with my feet. I'm peripheral, peripherally seeing with my shoulders. But now I'm also incorporating sound. And how does the sound How does the sound echo in my space? How does the sound echo in your space? How does your own movement echo with my movement in your space? So now we've been thinking about, always remember to take stillness. Now we've been thinking about direct looking with our feet, peripheral seeing with our shoulders, adding sound with our bodies, using our bodies to the space. And how does that sound, you know, like, how whales use echolocation. How does that sound? How is the sound your body is making? How is it reverberating off the walls? And back onto your body. And how is that reverberation back onto your body? helping you locate yourself and your intentions in the space. Really great job, everybody. You know, playing with planes, we're playing with looking versus seeing. We're playing with space and place. The sounds that we make in the space reveal our intentions in the space. Keep going, everyone. I just want to take a look. Really nice job, everybody. Yes, I'm loving the focus. And slowly come to a pause wherever you are, wherever you feel like your body would like to find stillness. Keep seeing peripherally and just think about that stillness, breathing into that stillness. Nice, everybody. And now we can slowly release. 
So I'm dripping sweat. <laughs> I hope everyone else is too. Um, we're nearing the end of our session together. Um, that was a continu continuous, straight flow of Dan's improvisation. I'd like to thank every single one of you for your focus, for your intentions today. I really felt them. Um, a few final notes that I'd like to kind of go over relating to everything we just went through. Oh yes, have some water. I think I forgot to say at the very beginning, please have, get a glass of water and put it right next to you um, because water is so essential. <laughs> um, so we, we began with Barbara Dilley's five eye practices. And we went through those steps, the five of them, closed eyes, peripheral seeing, uh, looking between things, infinite eyes, and direct looking. And then we actually transitioned or incorporated into that Dana Wright's ideas on space and place. And she talks a lot about how different spaces tell us how to move, you know, how big or how small our space is. The, 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 our environment gives us cues about how we should be moving with our own bodies. Um, and it also, our environment also tells us, you know, how comfortable or uncomfortable we are in the space. You know, how cold is it? How hot is it? Um, and Dana Wright says, it takes the full body rooted in space, rooted meaning um, grounded, you know, our feet are on the floor, we're lengthening, we're feeling the opposition. It takes the full body and rooted space to understand the gesture of one finger. So Dana Wright says it takes the full body to just understand going like this or, you know, looking like this, you know, our whole body becomes aware of that. And I think what that tells me is to trust our senses, to trust your senses and the intuition that comes from that. Really listen to what your body is telling you and acknowledge it and respect it. Um, and then a little transition. Let me see if I can do this to just a final question. Um, so Barbara, I'm sweating on the computer. Barbara Dilley um, was really inspired by Dharma art and Dharma art, one of the kind of principles of Dharma art is to create is to receive. And this idea of world building that the universe, creates you and you create the universe. And if to create is to receive, that also means that the universe receives you and you receive the universe. And this kind of reciprocal world building that happens within dance improvisation. And then thinking further with that, how that can go with contact improvisation. So what we did today was solo improvisation. And that also builds into contact improvisation, which is two or more people managing each other's movements together, um, building off of each other's movements and responding and reacting. There's a lot of weight sharing. There are a lot of lifting and partnering exercises and that's contact improvisation. And so how does this kind of awareness with the planes contribute to the weight sharing that happens there? They all kind of build on top of each other. So, I'd just like to end before I give it off to Bianca. Um, if anyone's familiar with Jennifer Lewis, she says, uh, the mother of Black Hollywood, she says, I am. It is the only thing there is no opposite to. And so what I love about that is, if Jennifer Lewis says, I am, it is the only thing there is no opposite to. If nobody is your opposite, then that means everyone is each other's compliments. And so I just find that really beautiful. And, I hope everyone stays safe and thank you so much for joining me today. I really had a great time and I hope y'all did too. Uh, thank you so much, Jack, for leading us through that really interesting class and teaching us so much. Um, and thank you to our guests for joining us. Uh, this Thursday, we actually have a really interesting program uh, as part of our Lunch and Learn series uh, designed to keep your mind fed during your lunch break. Uh, there will be more information on the closing slide. Thank you, everyone, and I hope that you'll join us again next time. <laughs>